So getting legendary items in Fallout 76, something that probably a lot of us are struggling with or maybe you're getting them but they're all horrible. Either way, as you actually get to some of the later levels in the game, you'll quickly realize that due to the bullet sponginess of the foes, you're going to need a legendary item that's maybe a little bit overpowered to take them down. In Fallout games, Bethesda typically uses the methodology of, oh, if we increase their health, they're harder, right? So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you two things. One, some methods of 100% every single time getting a legendary item, and alternatively ones that give you a chance but are maybe a bit more fair. Last thing, if you guys are farming legendary are trying to find just the right one, I would take a look over at the Market76 subreddit. It basically is just a trading subreddit for Fallout 76, a lot of that trading involving legendaries. You could sell your own on there for various caps or even other items, and if you have caps, you could probably buy the one you want. So there's a few locations in Fallout 76 that have a higher likelihood of spawning a legendary enemy. Now this definitely doesn't mean there's a 100% chance of it spawning, it just seems like there's a power in numbers effect going on here. The first of which is the White Springs Golf Club, or the little golf area around the White Springs Resort. Basically, a ton of ghouls spawn in here, and with a ton of ghouls, increases the likelihood of one of them happening to be a legendary enemy. As I was actually filming this video and using this place, I encountered four different legendary enemies. One way to actually really abuse some of these locations is to use server hopping. That is basically just disconnecting or joining a friend server so it'll reset the spawns there. Now depending on my level and the level of local players, a lot of times at this location you could find people from level 9 all the way up to level 50 to 60. But if you are a higher level and you want a more concrete way to get high level legendary spawns, another option is the Watoga High School. So if you actually go in this high school, it's going to start an event automatically. It's fairly simple and basic, more or less running around trying to get candy in this mask, but along the way, you'll probably realize and can see in the background, there are so many ghouls spawning. Now right off the bat, a lot of these guys are super easy to take down, so it's a good way to farm experience in general. I think I went up three levels just by doing this event a few times, but even beyond that, similar to the White Springs Golf Club, since there are so many enemies spawning, a lot of times you will encounter at least one legendary per round. Obviously your experience may vary, I found that when you have multiple players here, there just seems to be a higher likelihood, maybe because the level table goes up or something. And the way this little event actually works is, it'll always be there on your server, you could just start it by walking into the high school, but after you complete it, there's a cooldown period. A great way to avoid that cooldown period? Server hopping. You can very simply just disconnect and join another server, and the event will be right there, ready for you to start again. And last but not least, what I have had a lot of success with is the Blackwater Mine. There are just a ton of mole miners around this location, so oftentimes one of them will happen to be a legendary. They also are pretty high level, so if you're around level 40, 50, 60, this is going to be a pretty good way to actually get a legendary item just by farming this location, either for just levels itself or for those items. And the mine itself is fairly deep, so you'll typically find a bunch of other enemies throughout it. But maybe you're like me and you don't really like relying on chance, because all of those methods give you a chance at an item, but it's not concrete, it's not definite. Well, I do also have a method that will 100% give you a legendary item every time you do it. And that's going to be through events in Fallout 7. Now, these events are a little bit different. Servers in the game just have a random chance of this event being active. Some of them you can trigger yourself, like I showed you before, but a few of them you can't do that. So anytime you see those big yellow icons on the map, that's one of these events, and some of them will always give you a legendary item. The way to truly farm these is to server hop, just basically switch from server to server until you find one of the events active, or rather any of the events I'm about to tell you about. Horde events are one of the just easiest to actually use here. Hordes will always have one legendary boss in them. Depending on where the horde is, like in the forest or in the cranberry bog, will determine how high of a legendary and how hard of an enemy. But I think this is the easiest way to actually farm some of these items because the horde will oftentimes be fairly small. You literally just walk up to it, kill all the enemies, and Congratulations, you just won your item. You don't have to deal with waves or protecting things or anything like that. So if you're on the higher end looking for some hordes in the cranberry bog or the mire is how you're going to farm those items. And of course on the lower end in the forest you'll find fairly difficult enemies but also some good loot. But let's say one legendary item isn't enough. You need more than that to really make this server hopping lucrative. Well, I have a solution for you also. There's an event that can pop up in the forest towards the northwestern part of the map, basically called Leader of the Pack. 
This is actually a very low level event, so it's not going to give you some level 45 legendary item, actually probably something 10 to 15 if not lower, but it does spawn three wolves that you have to go and thus kill, and all three of those wolves are legendary enemies. This is really easy to do, it doesn't take that long at all, but one reason a high level player might do this is if you actually plan on creating a second character. You could farm this a couple times, get a bunch of good armor pieces, and give them to your new character once you create them, or technically you'll need a middleman in the process, but you get the idea. And then the event that is probably just the best for mid to high level characters is going to be Uranium Fever. It's going to be one that takes place at Blackwater Mine. Basically, there's going to be these uranium things going, you have to defend them. You're going to have to fend off waves of mole miners, but every once in a while, there'll be an announcement on the loudspeaker mentioning how a previously terminated supervisor is on site and you have to remove him. And that's going to be a legendary mole miner. Every time you do this event, you'll get three of these. So you are 100% getting three legendary enemies, probably level 40 to 70, and they will always drop at least one legendary item. If you're level like 30 to 60, I would say this is probably the best method to actually do this. And don't forget, you can do it with friends. A couple of you guys can all farm legendaries at the same time and try and maximize the output here. The event isn't that rare. I mean, I had a server hop a few times, but I always was able to find it within just a few minutes. And if you're high level, sorry, I honestly don't have a good answer for you. The best way to actually farm legendaries then is just to launch nukes. I'm not high enough level to launch nukes, and even though I had a bunch of footage of doing that, my hard drive broke, so I can't show you that. But either way, there is a post on the Fallout 76 subreddit right now, actually detailing some of the best locations to launch these nukes. And even beyond that, it actually goes over a couple of other events that don't always give you three enemies, but it gives you a couple of enemies in case you're interested in that. I tried to save the best of the best for this video. But then for those of you wondering, how can I get unlimited bad about abusing it? So yeah, that's hopefully a useful guide on finding various legendaries in Fallout 76. Hopefully this was helpful, hopefully it was informative. Just as a look ahead, I actually should have some other helpful and informative videos coming in the next couple of days or weeks. I want to make a video looking at every single weapon in Fallout 76, and like I've done that, you could click in the little eye if you want to see me talking about everyone, but I want to make a video where I actually use every weapon. It might be a while, I might hate myself after filming that, but I think it would be pretty cool to actually give a visual representation. Obviously, I have some of the rare ones already, because I made a video on that also that you can check out in the eye. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. And the cooking video should be coming shortly, before the end of November. But of course, with any video on this channel, or almost any video, before we end things off, I do want to share today's psychology fun fact of the day. One that's going to be is probably up there in like the top five most valuable things I learned through getting my degree, but also like just helps me in normal life. So hopefully it'll help you also. And that's going to be on negative reinforcement. Now I know some of you are like, wait, 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 you talked about this, right? Yeah, no, I did. It's another legacy fun fact, but I talked about it like two years ago, back when I first started doing this and a lot of new people are here now. But either way, you probably have heard of negative reinforcement, positive reinforcement, negative punishment maybe, that one's a lot less known. So basically the idea behind these are positive reinforcement is going to be an additive thing that increases the behavior, hence reinforcement and positive. Positive means additive, you are giving them something, and reinforcement means they're going to increase that behavior. Like paying somebody for coming to work. As a result of paying them, they'll probably continuously come to work. Alternatively, you do have negative reinforcement that's going to be taking something away to increase a behavior. And then you do have the same thing for punishment, where punishment is decreasing a behavior. So positive punishment, you find somebody for speeding and hopefully in the future they will stop speeding. So one of the first psychology classes that really sold me on the topic as a major, somebody literally asked the professor, if there's one thing you wanted us to take away from this class, what would it be? And he said negative reinforcement and the power it has in your day-to-day -day life. So if you've ever had something that you put off and just don't really want to do, that is going to contribute to negative reinforcement and it can be a massive problem for some people. Let's say it's washing the dishes, something relatively simple. You think, oh, I'll just do it a little bit later. Later comes, you say, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow, and you see where this is going. Each time you do that thing, it makes it slightly more difficult for you to actually end up doing it because you are reinforcing yourself to not do it. You're removing a negative action, something you don't want to do, and increasing the likelihood of your behavior being, I'm not going to wash the dishes. So what I hope the takeaway is, when you have one of those things that you really don't want to do, do it early on. Don't just keep putting it off, because it will end up decreasing the likelihood of it ever happening. Whether it be responding to an email or doing some tedious chore that you don't really want to. But either way, it's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.